for more. I'm joined now by Gaurav Sharma. He's an oil market analyst and Forbes columnist. He joins us from London. Thanks so much uh, for speaking with us. You know, this story just seems uh, so surreal to have negative oil prices. It's something industry and, you know, many consumers, quite honestly, would have just dreamed of prior to this pandemic. Yet at this bizarre point in history, it's, it's pretty bad news. Is anyone gaining from this? Thank you for having me on the program. I think it's a very tricky scenario, but the events of the last 24 hours are, are largely of the hedge fund managers and the money managers and the ETF managers, all these money men who take an exposure into the market with no intention of buying it, have been caught out cold. So now the West Texas contract is supposed to expire today, and these guys were holding a whole lot of contracts which they had no intention of honoring. So what do they do? They dump it. Essentially, when that dumping starts, the price first fell to zero and then astonishingly fell to minus $40. It, it's corrected since then. So what's happening right now is they're driving less, they're flying less, they're consuming less. And as a result, the demand for oil, as your colleague rightly alluded to in, uh, in the package, has virtually plummeted by somewhere in the region of 30 million barrels per day. The data is still coming out. And that, that's what's so, so bad right now. Another point I might add to it as is that this May contract might be in the negative, but look at what's happening to the June contract, the one that follows uh, for, for, for later on in the summer, and even that is down 30% today. That's, it's, it's just so remarkable because you're saying a lot of this is really at the, at the, at the doing of speculators that you know, many had argued before really should have been better regulated in the first place so that they couldn't. Uh, cause this kind of uh, just market price crash. Yet here we are. It's happening. Uh, let me ask you then, where does that leave the United States uh, in particular with its shale producers that can't even afford to produce now? It's way too cost prohibitive. Um, as well as their storage capacity uh, that was supposed to be there and we're discovering it's not. I think speculation will always be, be part of the business. It, it's very, very hard to avoid. But, but you're right, storage space, but it has not run out totally, but it's on the verge of running out. Now, private storage, one of the analysts in, in the package alluded to, that's shrinking rapidly. So we're talking about 78 million uh, barrels worth of storage. That might run out as, as soon as around about mid-May, which is not that far off. As for the president himself, well, he's, he's promising, well, I'll take 75 million barrels off your hands. But the United States is right now as things stand, the world's largest producer of oil, we're talking about 12.75 million barrels per day. The shale producers, they will take a knocking, a very serious knocking. Some of them are, frankly, in my opinion, toast. They'll be knocked out of the market. But even that would reduce production by about maybe 1.25 million barrels per day. That means we'll still have a whole lot of oil on our hands for the summer, yet uh, demand is is literally on the floor right now. Right, and no end in sight for uh, for that low demand. Okay, Gaurav Sharma, we'll leave it there. Thanks so much for joining us from London. We really appreciate it.